And welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hi, I'm Eric Stromer. And, uh... Yes, you are Eric Stroman. I am. And I'll tell you, I just wanted to let you all know that I am excited. You know why? Why? I like making gardens. I do too. I love it. It's, it's my favorite thing to do. It's therapy. It really is. And if you aren't yet uh, with the bug of gardening, we want to give it to you because you know what? It doesn't have to be hard and you're not going to be a failure and it's not going to take a ton of time and it's going to make you feel so fulfilled. It's going to just make you go, wow, you know what? I love my computer. I love my iPhone. But now I'm just going to put it aside, and I'm going to just connect with nature for a minute. And I'm going right. to relax. Yeah. And it feels good. And why not in- introduce kids to that gardening experience, too? That's exactly right. And, you and, did with your and kids. I sure did. And, and I'll tell you, I have, you know, I've got three kids under 16. Now I've got a 7-year-old daughter, 10-year-old son. And then him, <laughs> he's the one on technology like crazy. But anyway, he, the the two the two younger ones are really really into this, and and I I do tomatoes and and vegetables every season, and you know they're really going big guns now. But they just love the idea of digging in the dirt and really understanding how things work, you mm-hmm. know. And, and if you make the soil right and you support the the plant life with healthy soil and, and, you know, great irrigation, you can plant your seeds or your starter plants, and lo and behold, you get to eat stuff that shows up out of the ground. It's amazing. And conceptually, I, I think it's smart for us to let these kids know how it really works, not stuff that just sort of comes in a polystyrene right. container. No, it really shows up from somewhere, and this is how To it understand works. the process. Exactly. You know, and then just to kind of have fun. I mean, it is about fun. Hello. Yep. So let's talk you through some great ideas, whether you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, kids are coming over, and you want to have something to do, right? right. You want to get the kids excited yeah. because they're going to go, I'm bored, right? I'm yeah, bored. Yeah, I want to play summer. Game Boy. Oh, yeah. I want to be... <laughs> well, here's yeah. what. We're going to have a fun new project, yeah. a rainbow garden. Yeah. This is really great because it's going to teach kids their colors. That's it. Good idea. And it's it's just very, very easy. I mean, when it comes to, uh, to color gardens, there are a lot of possibilities. You know, take clues from the child, you know, like... Find out what colors that they like, and then you just find the plants that go with those colors, and it looks like the rainbow. Right. And very, guess very what? If, if you've got a goth kid that doesn't care about color, you, you can, there's plants that work for him or her, too. You can do goth. You can if you want. You can do. There's some black. <laughs> black stuff. There's some black stuff. Right. Burgundy. Egg, we can do eggplant, right? Yeah. Why not? I know. <laughs> I hope that the child isn't goth well, at that are, age. Well, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, anyway, so you can come up with a rainbow garden. Another really fun idea is to garden using themes. You talked about edibles, right? Right. You could have about appeal to the senses, yeah. You could come up with a garden that's all about different fragrances or different touches and textures. Of course, we love ra- um, rabbit ears, the fuzzy little ears, right? Yeah. You mean those little lambs? I'm sorry, lamb ears. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they taste, there was a fuzzy, fuzzy little lamb ears are great. Right. What about sweet, juicy fruits? Right. You know, you can just kind of show the different textures or a theme for the garden. Yeah, and then with each of these different themes, you can kind of create you know, stuff to go along with it hand in hand. For example, you know, you want to you want to create an herb garden, say. And, yes. You know, where do these different things that we can put in salads come from or, yes. or what we cook? And, you know, simple things just like popsicle sticks that you paint, you know, with, with chalkboard paint, which I love because... Oh, it's the plant a, markers. Yeah, the plant markers. They become, they become a great way to sort of identify chives. And then you learn how to spell by writing chives on the, the popsicle stick yeah. with a Sharpie, mm-hmm. whatever you use. Mm-hmm. But it just gives the, you know, participation in family life, I think, is really fun in this manner. And again, I was at a seminar over the weekend in, in D.C., and it was all these people talking about futurist thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Even the millennials, the generation that's behind me, you know, these guys that are, you know, 20 to 35 years old, they ha- they've they been born and, and, and experienced technology from the very beginning, but at the same time, they want to unplug completely. So I think a lot of that generation is realizing this is all great and it, I, I can't live without technology. 85% of them actually sleep with their phones and PDAs, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to us, and maybe it's 50% in the bed with them. They mm. literally have them, right? Mm-hmm. But at a certain point, you got to unplug from the technology, and there's not a better way to do that than in the gardening world, I think. And starting from from the very start, right? Yeah, that's it. How about an alphabet garden? I mean, this is kind of cute, and all all we mean by this is creating little, almost like a topiary effect, right? Creating an area where it's um, ground cover or shrubs or whatever certain kind of flowers, but you position them in, in the shape of, let's say, their initial, of their front, of their first name. 
That's right? so cute. Yeah, it's a C. It's a yeah, W. Yeah. It's then, a whatever. And, and then it becomes like, hey, that's the the shape of the W for my name. Why? Yeah. That's that makes sense. Or you, know? you could also plant by based on the name of the flower. Let's oh, say that cool. you're planting cosmos, then you plant them in the shape of a C. Yeah. You know, balloon flowers in the shape of a B. And so that way you can learn your ABCs, you yeah. know, with the different shapes. Great idea. Yeah. You know what else is cool? What's the, that? The dinosaur garden. Yeah. The dinosaur yay, garden. Yay, I love dinosaur gardens. Yeah, so. and that's cute. We, we have these in the terrariums that you made. Yes. Which I love. You know, anytime you can... Especially for some reason, it seems like with the little boys. I mean, my yeah. my two guys were really into the whole dinosaur theme. But you know, plastic, you know, dinosaur guys that you can, you know, grow your plants and then create these little tiny worlds within the garden itself by just having the you know dinosaurs next to each plant. Uh -huh. Then it can almost become like a play area, a, a a sandbox, if you will. But there's nature in there that you've grown and you've chosen these plants wisely. Great, things like ferns and. You know, the the shade plants, I think, work really well. The saga the palm situation. is great. Yes. In fact, you know, when uh, one of my nieces came over from Michigan a few years ago, when she first came to the house, she said, dinosaur trees. So see, oh, is that right? That, oh, was, that, was her, that was her association with ferns and palm trees. And so it can not only be a miniaturized version, but it could be, especially if you have a shady spot, it could be a large, you know, adult size, yeah. but you could maybe put some signs in there that say, you know, don't feed the dinosaurs. Oh, that's great. You know, or, or stay on path, <laughs> exclamation point. Right? Shades of Jurassic Park, that's right? That's it, exactly. So, so you could just have like some ferns in there and mosses and, and uh, different kinds of ginkgo trees. And another really good one is like asparagus ferns. They're really fluffy. Oh, those are and, cool, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then just going whimsical. That's another great way to have um, kids introduced to a garden. I mean, the goal is to not only get them away from technology, but to um, to really instill a love of nature. And then there's some education involved. Like you said, that with what you're doing, you're showing kids where food comes from, right? Right. Showing them that, hey, we want to make sure that the honeybees are happy and all that stuff. That's exactly but right. But then there's some other things like in terms of, you know, learning about um, all the other bugs and, and butterflies and things that come along with it. And of course, bird feeders. Yeah. Bird that's, feeders. That's right. And, and and I tell you, the thing that I think is really important too is to demystify insects and bees. And, you know, I, I see a lot of these little kids who are terrified of bees, right? But bees are so important to, to what's going on in nature right now, especially from your experience at the at the bee center. Yes. You have to, if, if you're introducing them to nature and plant life, it, you're obviously going to be involved with the insects and the, and the animal kingdom a little bit more. I, I think it's nice to keep people comfortable around insects and not like run in terror if there's a spider. You know, it's just right. not that big a deal. Well, I think it's because of movies. You know, you yeah. see things on, on TV or in the movies and then you get scared without really knowing, right? Exactly. And so introducing without even, you know, necessarily doing plants and, and those kind of things, just by having some garden decor, like a bird feeder, like a bird bath, right. that will introduce nature to your space, that's going to create more wonderment, right? I got to tell you, the, since you introduced me to to the thistle the, factory, the which finch, is now my finch the feeder, the thistle factory. and I swear I have spent so much money on thistle, on but thistle? I but I love them, and Did it you try revealed the, sunflower? the fact that I have a speech impediment because I can't <laughs> say thistle. <laughs> no, we all that's when you say thistle, you have to say thistle. Thistle, but yeah. but the truth is what that we found that finch don't like generic no, food. No, and they go crazy. They spit with, out the other they, stuff. They're like, what is this? Are you That's kidding not me? a steak. I want but, to... but we also found out that they like the thist thistle food with? with sunflower seeds. It's almost like they're granola it's or something. It's almost like they're going to they're gonna just show up and not go away. I mean, I, I swear, I, it's, it's, I have an aviary now as a result of two bird feeders in my backyard. I know. So really do pretty. all these things because it will not only give you a sense of fun for you, bring out the kid in you, but it will, for those kids in your family, you know, give them some fun. And by the way, consider even a pizza garden. I want you to do that because you have tomatoes. Sure. You can oh, that, grow and, some and other basil things. as well, yeah. obviously. That's a great idea. Now you're going to make it for the pizza for oh, Sunday night. What a nice you idea. Know? Yep. We'll put all this on the website again, as always, at yourhomewizards.com because we love the idea of making you just enjoy those spaces that you call home, outside and in. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards, and follow us at our website at yourhomewizards.com. I'll light the fire while Place the flowers in the vase that you bought today. 